Welcome everyone to worship and observance of the second Sunday of Advent. I'd like to start with a few brief announcements. Just to make sure that the information is out there for everyone to have access to, our worship schedule right now is the recorded service that is available Saturday afternoons at 5 o'clock. You may come to worship in person Sunday morning at 8.30 inside the building, and you can come for our parking lot service at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. We have continued to offer three services to hopefully meet as many needs as are out there. On the topic of worship schedules, I want to share with everybody, for Christmas Eve, we will worship at 3 o'clock in the parking lot. This service will include the children's sermon at 5 o'clock inside and at 7 o'clock in the parking lot. Please join us for worship on this holy night. I'm pleased to share with you we are up to 84 commitments of support for the congregation in 2021. We are two-thirds of the way to our challenge gift. So thank you to everyone who has offered a commitment, and for those who have not been able to do so yet, uh, please do so either electronically or with a paper card, and if you need help with that, please reach out to the church office. I'm pleased to share with you that we did have 10 families sign up for electronic giving, and that has earned us a different challenge gift that a family has generously offered us this fall. I also want to remind everybody to look for information coming out in the next couple of weeks on our online Christmas pageant. Uh, We did not want to let this December go by without doing something special in the lead up to Christmas, and we're going to have a virtual Christmas pageant put together by several families in our congregation. So keep your eyes peeled for that. At this time, at the beginning of worship, I would like to invite you to watch a brief message from our evangelism team. Evangelism is simply talking to someone else about God. Now, we don't preach at them. What we do is we point. We want to help our friends, our families, our co-workers, everyone around us who encounter, we encounter in our daily life to find God in their lives. And here's an example of what that might look like. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Hey, Kim. I'm doing great. Beautiful day outside, nice sun shining. How about you? Well, I wish I could say everything's great. But with me having to work from home these days and the kids doing e-learning, it's really hard to keep it all going, not to mention taking care of the house and making sure the kids are fed and clean. It's just sheer madness. Boy, Kim, that's a lot. What do you think is helping you get through this? Honestly, Dave, I don't know. I think I'm just holding on by threads. Wow, that's that's a tough situation to be in. But think about this for a moment. Being able to get through each day and being able to manage that day together with all the other tasks. Do you think that God's in your life at that point in time? Well, I haven't killed somebody, so if that counts, then yes. <laughs> I get that. We all we've all been driven to that point in, in the past, in time. But remember, God's right there in the mess of daily life, working for you and with you. Do you ever sense God's presence with you? Well, there are times at the end of the day where I finally just sit down and turn the television, and it's very quiet, and one by one the family comes in, and we all sit there and enjoy our time together. I would say that's pretty peaceful, and I feel good then. Great. Do you, do you, could it be that peaceful feeling comes from God, letting you know in the middle of everything he cares for us, he's with us, there's nothing too large for him to overcome for us? And he's always there. Well, I certainly never thought about it that way, but maybe if I paid attention to those quiet times, then I'd feel that peace that he's giving me, and it won't seem so crazy. Could be. We should try it sometime. Thanks. Now, see, that's not so hard. Just a few words can help point to God. Let us begin our worship with lighting the Advent wreath. Today, we light the second candle, the candle of peace. Because of war, because of violence in our communities, because there is still so much unrest in Jerusalem, we light a candle of peace. Because hatred is still so strong, because so many swords have not yet been beaten into plowshares, we light a candle of peace.
May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. May the light from this candle, stage 12, God's peace, is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God's peace is at hand. hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Christ. Friends, I invite you to look at the Holy Shepherd website or the Pastor Eric Schlichting YouTube channel. Both are places where you can find a video of this week's children's sermon. Grace and peace to you from the one who is and who was and who is to come. Let me take you back to Sunday, November 14th, 2007. Andrea and I were sitting about midway up the stands above the south end zone of Soldier Field. We didn't know it at the time, but we were witnessing the beginning of a legendary career. Unfortunately for us, it was the career of Vikings running back Adrian Peterson. Rushing for 224 yards that day, he set the record for most rushing yards given up by the Bears defense in franchise history. I'm not an expert in football, but I do know it's a team sport, and even an athlete of Peterson's skill can't perform like that without the help of his teammates, in particular, the offensive line in front of him. The beginning of every good run is the offensive line making a break in the defense that the running back can run through. At the beginning of the play, the offensive line springs into action to block those who are trying to contain, trip up, or tackle the running back and keep him from moving forward. I'm drawn to this image of creating a break to begin running in a certain direction, not only because we're in the midst of football season, but also because we're in the midst of Advent. Advent is the beginning of the church year. And over the year to come, we're going to be following Mark's gospel as we remember and ritually relive Jesus' mission to renew, restore, and redeem creation. Today we heard the opening of Mark's account of Jesus' life, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Through this season of Advent, I'm letting this verse guide me in preparing the message each week looking at different ways the good news is a beginning for us. Both in the words of Isaiah and the ministry of John the Baptist, today I see the good news as a beginning that's like the beginning of a successful running play in football. The beginning of the good news is God creating a break in whatever tries to hold us back or trip us up so that we can run through into renewed life with God. Isaiah preached to God's people while they lived in exile, taken away from everything that was familiar and from all the ways that they had learned to live out their faith. Isaiah brings the people good news from God. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every, le every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. The beginning of the good news is that God is going to create a break in the barren wilderness so that God's people can rush through it out of exile and into renewed life with God. I think this is the beginning of very good news for us here at the tail end of 2020 because exile isn't limited just to some people in the Bible in Babylon 25 centuries ago. Exile is probably more real to most of us right now than it has ever been. We've been separated from a lot of what we know and pulled away from a lot of what was familiar. We have been forced apart from some of the ways we have learned to live out our faith together as a community. The beginning of the good news is God breaking through whatever keeps us in exile and inviting us to run through that break into renewed life with God. For God's people in Babylon, 
That break was a path through the wilderness, not just to a specific place, but to a renewed way of living as God's people. It wasn't just about returning to a specific spot on the map. It was about embracing the truth they learned in exile, that they could still be God's people apart from that place. When God made a break for them to run through, they could take this growth and faith with them into renewed life as God's people. At least for me, it's a little too early to say for sure what break God is making for us to run through right now. But I think part of the break God is making for us to run through into renewed life with him is forcing us to grow our understanding of where God can be at work. I'm sure that before February, all of us would have said, of course I agree with Jesus when he says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. But now that we've had to gather in other places, in our living rooms, in our parking lot, in our cars, it's been a test of just how much we truly believe Jesus when he says where he promises to show up. If this is the break God is making, growing our sense of where God can be at work, then we can run through this break into renewed life with God where we live with a deeper awareness of God's presence. And if we have a deeper awareness of God's presence, it helps us see that any and every place we find ourselves is a place where we can live in a way that honors God. Generations after Isaiah, when Mark wrote about the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he began with the ministry of John the Baptist. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. To hear these words as the beginning of good news, as God making a break we can run through into renewed life with him, there's a couple of things about John's work that we need to make sure we're understanding correctly. One is that John baptizing people was not the same as when we as Jesus' disciples baptize people. When we baptize, we trust that it's a moment when God makes promises to us. For John, baptism was an act that showed a person's commitment to repentance. Another thing we need to make sure we're understanding correctly is that when we hear the word repentance, what we usually think of is actually penitence, feeling bad about what we've done. Even though these two words sound a lot alike, they aren't. Repentance is a spiritual and ethical revolution. And it's not a coincidence that repentance and revolution both come from words that mean to turn around. Repentance is turning in a faithful direction and beginning to move. Repentance is looking at the field to see which end zone you're supposed to be running for, grabbing the ball and running with it. But you can't run with the ball unless someone blocks for you first. You will come to a dead stop unless someone makes a break in the defense for you to run through first. The break that opens up a hole for us to run through as we practice repentance, turning and moving in a more faithful direction, is God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness makes a break in our guilt, in our pride, in our fear. God's forgiveness makes a break in our greed, in our hate, in our belief that the world is supposed to revolve around us. God's forgiveness God's willingness to give us another chance to run with the ball, even if we lost yards on the last play, breaks through whatever keeps us from moving forward into renewed life with God. That move into renewed life with God will not always be a walk in the park. Like a running back, even when there is a break for us to run through, hands will reach out to grab us and slow us down. We might trip over our own feet or lose our balance, and we might just take a hit that seems to come out of nowhere, even when we feel like we're moving along really well. This is how 2020 has felt to me as your pastor. In February, 
Our teams, committees, and groups were having more people participate. We were laying the groundwork for new ministries. People who had been involved were finding new ministry, and other people were getting more engaged. And as we were moving along, it felt like we took a body blow out of nowhere that suddenly made it so much harder to participate and get involved. But the beginning of the good news, the good news we hear from Isaiah and the ministry of John the Baptist, is that whatever keeps us from moving in a faithful direction, whatever keeps us from running into renewed life with God, both as individuals and as a community, God will make a break in it for us to run through. I pray that God will give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to trust where those breaks are in our lives. I pray that God will bless us with faith to help us rush to those breaks, with courage to run through them, and with strength to keep moving even when we get bogged down, so that we can keep moving in that faithful direction toward renewed life with God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is that God already made a break in the separation between God and us when God was born as Jesus. And in breaking from the tomb, Jesus made a break for us to run through into new life now and into resurrection life to come. Thanks be to God.
God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and our questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work toward a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. Especially we pray for all those on our prayer list and those we name before you now aloud or in our hearts. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share God's peace with any with whom you're gathered for worship. Friends in Christ, at this time when we usually collect the offering, I want to thank everyone who has continued to support this congregation so generously through an uncertain year. If you're able to do so, please visit holy-shepherd.org and click where it says Give for information on how you can make a financial gift to sustain our shared ministry. Thank you for your generosity. Please join me in prayer. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. Holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait, we praise you for joining us to your people of old. We bless you for your prophets who call us to righteousness and promise a new earth with peace for all. For the word of your covenant, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O God. We magnify you, O God. Send your spirit on all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace, accompany us with your might, and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. All praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. To fulfill our mission as Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church, we trust in God for guidance and support. Thank God in word and deed. 
teach the good news of Jesus, and tend those inside and outside the flock, because the Holy Spirit ties us closer to God and to one another and transforms us into devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We share God's love with all creation.